Hello again, Mission Control. Well, today we're gonna to be talking about insulation. And it is another one of those critical, really important parts of the system. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So this is a roll, uh, a remnant of the uh, batten insulation we chose to install. And I'm sure you probably, if you're new to the channel, you might have some questions about why we chose this particular type of insulation. So I wanna go over that today. Uh, it's nice just to sit here, lay here. When uh, our very first insulation was simply plastic over the top of lanes two and three just to help keep the heat in. And obviously when we chose to expand the lanes uh, one and four and we put those in as well as the microgreen processing we had to make a decision to heat the whole building or to create a environmental control system that went to each of the lanes and insulate only the lanes and basically let the rest of the building get cold. We chose to go with heating the whole building uh, and the reason for that is because of the microgreen operations, because you have to plant, you have to harvest, you have to do everything in here. Uh, so we didn't want to create a separate building where you would have to heat it as well and then have to walk the greens outside, potentially below freezing temperatures. So we went with just uh, heating the entire building. And I think hindsight what it is, I think it's still the right choice. So I guess that's, you know, if your decision stands the test of time type of thing. But we looked at uh, double wall poly which is a traditional greenhouse uh, type of insulation. I looked at a spray-on foam uh, insulation. Uh, looked at a sheet of woven PVC uh, that would be, uh, it's actually purpose-built insulation for this type of building. It's just a single layer of woven PVC that has some insulation factor. And I looked at this batten insulation, which has the batten on one side and then it has uh, this vinyl well, not vinyl, but a plastic, uh, woven plastic with threaded plastic cover on the outside to keep it, you know, tough. So I uh, did a quick trade study, pulled together all the uh, insulating values and the heat uh, loss values, uh, the whole surface area of the building, did a bunch of different, you know, if this, then that type of, what about this uh, type of analysis. And the double wall poly, you know, a lot of subscribers are really hard up on that one, but it just didn't have the insulation value uh, needed to really keep this building warm when there's no sun out. If you have sun, you know, you're almost with the new uh, cover that we have that lets all the sun in, you barely need insulation at all. But at night you need insulation. And this is a big, big, big building. So uh, double wall poly uh, went out. I looked at polycarbonate as well. Uh, like installing polycarbonate everywhere and that one could be pretty cool uh, but its cost got ridiculous so um, that one went out and uh, searched the web found two suppliers for you know fabric covered buildings that actually make uh, insulation and went with uh, one of them uh, the other one had the the really thin version it kind of had velcro that you just strap up It'd be a lot easier to install in hindsight um, but its insulation value wasn't as good. Um, so went with the batten one. And we're going to talk about challenges of insulation in a, in a future video, but this one we're just going to go over. This is one I ended up choosing, and then we got it all installed. Had a whole series of videos on the install, and that's why I'm laying down right now is because I'm still recovering from that series of events. It was horrible. Anyway, so uh, that's kind of why we chose to go with the batten insulation. So when you do the math on this batten insulation, oh, I forgot to say um, spray-on insulation. The reason we chose not to go with spray-on insulation, which in hindsight is really worth considering, uh, is, is because of the, the dynamic nature of this building. The fabric, the skin, it all moves. Um, so you put that spray-on insulation on, you give it enough uh, cycles of this, eventually it starts to separate, eventually it starts to sag, and then you can create a whole bunch of problems as it falls off. So uh, I could be right, could be wrong on all those things. Of course, well, this whole thing I could be wrong on. But anyway, uh, I chose to avoid that particular failure mode. In addition, I wasn't sure how it would play with snow and ice and stuff. You know, putting a lot more weight on the building if you were to spray the whole northern side. Um, and then forget about changing your cover. That would be just a mess, huge mess. So. Uh, I chose not to go with spray on for that reason. Anyway, you do the math on this particular insulation in one season and essentially pays itself off with the heating cost that it saves. So I'm pretty happy 
with the insulation. And for those that are considering doing greenhouses and all that, there's a lot of professional built greenhouses that are out there that are way better than what we've done. But I couldn't find anything this tall and, and this tough. And maybe it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It just means after a year and of design work and then sitting there and trying to find all the parts to build this thing, I couldn't find it. Uh, I think they'll make them for you, but you're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, to get like a custom built greenhouse and we don't have that money. So um, we chose this building and uh, went with it because of its strength, uh, its ease of install and its cost. It was very affordable. This whole building was $20,000 and that's after import fees because uh, we ended up having to buy it from China because the US one was about $40,000 uh, for the same thing. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, the cost of return on investment on insulation is, is definitely there. Uh, spend your money on insulation before you have to spend your money on heating. So last year when we were, uh, we didn't have this lane, I'm standing between the building and lane four. This is the northern side of the uh, building here. And we learned that water penetration and, and cold uh, going, well, heat going out uh, of the building along the side of the building is, is really, really important. For people who have built greenhouses in the north, you know uh, that's something that you have to deal with. I never bought a, built a greenhouse, so I had to learn it kind of the hard way and then through research and discovered you need to put what's called a Swedish skirt around the outside of the building. Swedish skirt is essentially just uh, insulation that either goes vertical down or you slope out. And the reason you want to do that is if you, if you do it right, like what we ended up doing, it ends up moving water away from the building, but it also create, it, it moves the freezing line away from the building. So you get a little less heat, you kind of, you move the heat loss out a little bit. Deep down in the ground, you're still gonna get heat loss, but you're not gonna get as much. And that's another thing that you need to do if you're working in the Great North, is you need to make sure the outside of your building at the foundation is insulated. Uh, and that's a lesson we took from the folks up in the Yukon. Um, and we did that retrofit this last year. So you can go back and check out those videos as we re redug everything, put it all in. But it's working really, really well. Uh, really happy with it. So that's the last consideration that we had when insulating the building. So now we have the entire inside insulated. We also have the base of the building insulated. So when you think about designing something on Mars again, you know, building your habitat, how you insulate it, is gonna be a, a major consideration. So uh, for us here, it's, it's really no different in trying to find the most efficient way to insulate a facility that's low maintenance, uh, because if you're on Mars, you're not gonna be able to call up the store and say, hey, you know, I had a condensation problem in my batten insulation, can you send over another roll type of thing. Um, so I'm not totally satisfied yet with the uh, insulation solution we have, but it is what we have right now. And when we go to HAB2 and things get smaller, it'd be a little bit easier to start thinking of things, especially if you put it in a Conex, you could do uh, rigid foam or spray-in foam or spray-in foam and rigid foam. You could do a lot of things there. Uh, so we'll play with it, but it's definitely a major consideration no matter what you do. And it's for hot and cold purposes. So in the summer, you wanna keep this place from overheating and getting too much uh, outside heat coming in. So. Uh, or heat transfer uh, from the outside. So insulation helps there too, but it also keeps heat in if you don't have a ventilator right. So lots of things to consider there. And we'll talk about some of those, especially condensation. That'll be a major problem that we talk about in a future video regarding challenges with the insulation. So hope you guys uh, enjoyed following along with this video and see why we did what we did with insulation. If you did enjoy this video, please be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. And don't forget, you can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. In the meantime, this is The Real Martian, out.